That string go. I designed this book charka to use a Bic Pens shaft for the shafts to hold these wheels together. So with the appropriate sections cut, those go into the bearing blocks like so, and then we're ready to assemble the wheels onto the frame. This drive band actually came from a piece of Tupperware, although you could use rubber bands for the same purpose. It just happens to be perfect, and so I'm using it. With that in place around the bigger wheel and around the smaller portion of the second wheel, I'm ready to set these onto the drive band. And now they are ready to drive the spindle. Now, for the spindle holder assembly, this piece right here needs a typical rubber band like so to go through these two holes and that's going to make this spring loaded to put tension on the band. With the rubber band in place we're ready to insert the pin and put the whole assembly together. This pin that holds the uh, spindle holder assembly together is made out of the same welding rod that the spindle itself is made out of to reduce the number of parts. It just has a 90 degree angle bend and it slides into place like so to make the hinge. From here, the rubber bands need to connect onto that little spur to put some spring tension on the spindle holder assembly. This now spring loads shut. From here, a typical piece of string makes up the main drive band. You could actually make this yourself, which is kind of cool, very meta. That goes around the large wheel of the double wheel, and then it goes around the spindle pulley and then the spindle drops into place and kind of fits into this groove here. These holes are to add string bearings if you would like to, although it works just fine without them. In this case my spindle holder is leaning a little bit too far forward so I should probably tighten that band to get it to hold a little bit more vertically. That'll give more clearance for the thread. So in order to adjust that, what I'm going to do is tie a little knot in my band to make it shorter. Like so. And now it's ready to go. The last thing to do is to clamp it to the table to make it just a little bit easier to work with. Okay, with the machine now assembled, it's ready to begin spinning. This type of spindle is called a quill wheel, and the way it works is actually really, really clever. If I turn the wheel this way, you can see at the very, very tip, the string will try to spin and then it will fall off the edge repeatedly. As I spin around and around and around, that twist is gonna build up in here. And that works if I'm at an angle of about, about here or here it will continue to fall off. If, however, I'm ready to wind it on, all I have to do is change the angle to closer to 90 degrees and it will wind into place until I'm ready to start spinning again just by changing angle with my hands. I designed this wheel to work with regular old cotton balls and this is what I've used mostly for testing. You take one of these cotton balls, layer it into the end of a piece of string that you've already made, and then Holding it at that angle, 
you apply very, very little tension and then begin to turn the wheel. The cotton fibers from the string will automatically grab onto the cotton of the cotton ball. And as you pull out, that grabbing action is what's actually going to do the drafting for you. All you have to do with this hand is be very, very careful about the amount of tension you're using so that you don't break it and you also don't let it just build up too quickly. I found this box at a local thrift store and I designed my initial pulleys so that they would just barely fit with inside. I positioned these two bearing blocks by eyeballing it. I put the first one in place and kind of moved it around to where I wanted it and then I moved the second one in place to where it wouldn't bother the first. And that's where how I knew where to glue them. If you don't happen to have a box, you can also lay out all of these parts just onto a flat board and make something a little bit more like a traditional charka. And that works just as well. To make the spindle, what you do is you print the spindle pulley and the spindle guard and then attach them by just sliding them on to a piece of the welding rod. This one's probably about nine inches long. Then, to make sure that the pulley and the spindle guard are firmly attached, there's actually a really cool trick to that. You take a lighter and you apply heat to the rod and not the pulley directly and then the rod eventually will get hot enough that it will melt the plastic that it's in contact with and then it's not moving anywhere. So it's actually glued in place with the plastic itself. This rubber band happens to be one from an old Tupperware container. This is the silicone seal that went with it. I have however used regular rubber bands and they work just fine. The drive band goes around the big pulley and then around the smaller part of the little pulley. That makes this pulley double the speed before it gets to the spindle and acts as if this wheel were quite a lot larger than it is. The second drive band is nothing special. It's literally a piece of embroidery thread tied into a loop at approximately the correct length. That goes like so. The small pulley of the spindle fits in like so and then drops into the groove of the spindle holder. It's now ready to spin. You can, however, use regular rubber bands. These are two normal ones. They're going to go around the small loop like so, and then around the big loop like so. And these actually might work even better. And once you're done, you simply pop this thing off, and you have a whole bunch of hand-spun cotton thread to do with whatever you like. If you're into crochet, you can use this for that. If you're into weaving, you can use this for that. And if you just like having lots of thread around, it is incredibly useful stuff. Once you're done spinning for the day, you can disassemble this whole thing and fold it up. What that looks like is you flip out the drive band that attaches to the spindle, kind of tuck that over here, take the spindle itself, tuck that over there. If you carry a spare, tuck that over there. And then we go over here to the uh, assembly for the spindle holder. And if we disassemble that, and tuck it into the hole. The whole thing folds up, latches, and can be set on your bookcase as if it were a book. Incidentally, I've improved the design even further. The original shafts which I used to make the, the pulleys turn around were made from Bic pens because I figured they'd be pretty easy to find. But, you know, it's even easier to find the welding rod that you needed for the other part of the kit anyway. So I fixed those. Everything runs a lot smoother now. I've also put the Good and Basic logo right here on the main pulley. And if you would like to buy one of these kits, I'm now selling them on goodandbasic.com as well as on Etsy. So link in the description below if you want to see that. Current price is about 30 bucks. So 
exciting. Very, very, very exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please check out some of our others. And if you really enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe below. We look forward to seeing you next time.